and welcome to another episode of Data Lounge, where we take a more relaxed and fun look at uh, the data. We have a very special uh, guest with us today. Uh, Barney, welcome to uh, Data Lounge. How are you doing? I'm good, thank you. How are you? Fine, thank you very much. So, we are seeing here um, that we were talking about large volumes of data, Correct. right? On, yes. on relational uh, databases, particularly now in the cloud. Yes. And there is this thing called hyperscale, the Azure SQL hyperscale. So they're like one of the many flavors of SQL <laughs> in the cloud. So what, what is this hyperscale all about? So Azure SQL hyperscale mm -hmm. is um, Microsoft upping the game with SQL Server and enabling fast data volumes like you would use in Azure SQL da Data Warehouse. Uh -huh but with the normal SQL Server compute engine. Okay, so it's, it's, it's somehow similar to Azure SQL Database? Is it another flavor of Azure SQL Database? What, what is yeah. it? So it is yeah, just another flavor of Azure SQL Database. Okay. But what they've done is they have decoupled the compute from the storage oh, okay. and actually moved the storage onto blob storage. Okay. And this enables you to actually have up to 100 terabytes of data. Up to 100 terabytes of data, because the current yeah. limitation that we have with um, Azure SQL database is four terabytes, right? And now yeah. the limit with hyperscale is 100 terabytes. Correct. Okay, so let's, can we, can we take a look? How, how is okay. that looking like in, in, in Azure? Okay, so in the Azure portal, we have the usual screen for SQL database. Uh -huh. And what you can see here is that we have Gen 4, 8 V cores. Okay, oh, that's there on the pricing tier. It says uh, hyperscale. Yes. Okay. And it is core based licensing. Okay. So, um, as you can see here, we've got 270 gig of data. But as I said, you can just keep on going up okay. to 100 terabytes of data. Okay. Um, and What's useful about it being in the vCore model? Yes. You can scale up and down. Okay, so I still have, I still keep the elasticity that we have in Azure SQL database to Correct. increase or reduce um, the, the number of cores and the capacity yes. actually, or the compute power of, 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 of the database. Yes. Okay. Um, so as you can see here, I can go up to 24 cores in Gen 4. Okay. But check it out. Can have wow. 80 cores. In generation five yes. already. Oh, okay. Wow, that's um, a massive increase in compute yes. power. Okay. And as you can see, that's 400 gig of RAM. Okay. Wow, that's 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 quite impressive. So that's 80 cores serving your data at the moment. Okay. But guess what? You can have 400 cores serving your data. I can have 400 cores, but why do I see only 80 here? Well, you can have secondary read replicas. Oh, so it also includes already replicas for read operations. Yes. Oh, excellent. Okay, and and this the, the, this technology the way it is here, I'm not seeing on this screen anything related to the, the storage. I'm not allocating here one terabyte or two terabytes. How, how does that work? Um, so it just scales as it, it's needed. That's it. So That's I can it. start right now. I can provision a Azure SQL database, say yep. it's in hyperscale yes. mode, yep. right? And I don't have to specify the size. I don't have to go increase in blocks of 250 no, or 50 gigs. No. Nothing like that. Nothing like that. You, 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 it's all abstracted away from you. So. Okay. Well, that's that's great because I don't have to go then managing individually each gigabyte or each hundred gigabytes. <laughs> I, it just yeah. grows naturally. Yes. And the only thing I have to manage is just like this with this slider, just yes. the memory and the re the CPUs, the cores and the replicas, and that's it. Yes, that's correct. And okay, being that it, unlike SQL Data Warehouse, yes, it has the full SQL Server language support. Okay, so it's full TransX SQL yeah. that many of us uh, in the industry know and love, full T-SQL, yeah. right? And, and what is the interaction? So what else do we have? What do we have in this database right now? Okay, so we have um, a large fact table. Okay. The sales fact table. Okay. Which we've got 2.8 billion rows of data. Wow, okay, excellent. Um, and what, what else we can see here is 
Um, previously, when I was on, we talked about aggregations. Yes. And we have multiple different types of aggregations. Mm -hmm. On, as you can see, we've got customer product sales. Yes. Customer subcategory sales. Yes. Product sales, store product sales, and subcategory which, sales. Which is a common technique when we're talking about um, data warehousing and analytics to pre-aggregate yeah. data for particular analysis yes. and increase the performance. Correct. Okay. Um, so what this enables us to do is because it's one um, performance issue that mm -hmm. people are often seeing in in memory models is that querying the detail level is challenging. That, that's, correct. That's challenging. Yes, yes correct. Challenging. Um, so by building up uh, an analysis services or Power BI model on top of this, mm -hmm. we can select which aggregation that we'd like to see. Okay, okay, excellent. So that means that we wouldn't, so we're mixing the technologies here actually to achieve a better performance, correct? correct. Because, so we're using, we would be using Power BI or analysis services in direct query mode yes. to attack this massive powerful database on the background. Yes. Okay, perfect. Um, so as you can see, we have an S0. Analysis services, yeah. which is the, the smallest production uh, capability analysis services. Okay. Correct. Which, uh, which allows direct query. Yep, correct. Um, and we've created some reports over this. Okay, so, you're, so you already have reports and everything running here. Okay, yeah. let's, let's take a look at the reports. Okay. So what we have here is the sales demo. Yep. Um, hopefully, my computer. Let's see. There, there it is. Go. There, there it is. Go. A little bit of suspense <laughs> now in the recording studio. Um, and as you can see, that that's already loaded. That this is querying the same data set, the two the yeah. two billion that we're looking at, almost three billion we were looking at before. Yes. With this performance, just like this. Yes. <laughs> How? So this is all indexing. Okay. Um, aggregations. Yes. Um, Column store. Okay. It's just a mixture of all the things that we've. How, how's the interaction with these? Because it, this looks probably to our to our viewers, it looks like oh, this is too quick, it is too fast. Let's interact with this. Okay. So, as we can see. Wow. Okay. Um, and you know we've got sales, we've got products, and we've got stores. So that. Let's uh -huh. look at stores. It's rendering really, really fast, and this yes. is one of the challenges with when we have very large data volumes. Uh, is how as 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 powerful as Power BI is, yeah. definitely the experience and the responsiveness of the interaction when yes. we're trying to analyze these very large volumes of data, even going to a very detailed level. Because I see some details on at the store level already here. Yes. So this is able to pull back different levels of aggregations. Uh -huh. um, you can see here we've got the sales for this date range. Yep. So, uh, no. um, we can even interact by geography. Yes. Um, so at a continent level or even down to a country level. Wow, very interesting. And I see here that we are using as well uh, the new navigation experience for Power yes. BI, correct? correct? Okay, so this is definitely a cleaner look for an organization that is trying to achieve a, a, a consistent data visualization and data exploration experience, yes. but with the power of very advanced uh, and powerful database behind yes. the cameras. Yes. Okay, can we take, what else can, can we see here, or probably on, on, on the rest of what you have prepared for us today? Okay, so as we can see, we've got the report. What we can actually do mm -hmm. is go back to the portal and let's okay. have a look at some of the metrics and sure. see if we've actually been stressing the database. Perfect. Let's, let's take a look to see how much we're going to pay for this. So I'm just going to not save 400 okay. core instance. Yeah, we don't need that right now, I guess. <laughs> um, and you, what we can see here is mm -hmm. the metrics in the portal, which, as we can see here, we've not even been stressing it. Wow. Wow, it's a very small pressure. It's tiny pressure on the CPU. This is CPU yes. we're looking at right now, so right? So this and is, yes. 2%? 2.85%. Uh, 2.85% 2 2 <laughs> quitting 3 billion rows of yes. data in hyperscale. 
Um, I, I think this is this is quite valuable for for some of our viewers um, and and some of you that might be familiar with um, Azure. Uh, what we're seeing right now is the matrix pane, is, is the place where we can get, for multiple resources, but obviously for, uh, in, in our case, for Azure SQL uh, database on this super hyperscale <laughs> boat, uh, where we can see and monitor part of the Azure Monitor new infrastructure in Azure. Uh, and, it, and, and it's showing us really clearly how this interaction, because th that's one of the challenges with Power BI, is when we have multiple yeah. uh, areas, yeah. those are individual queries that are being sent yes. behind the cameras, right? Yeah. So if we go back, what we can see here is every single one of these is separate queries. It's separate queries. So right now, every time I'm clicking there, uh, we're, yeah. seeing, we're submitting basically six to 10 queries, yeah. right? Correct. And the problem we've had previously when we've been using SQL Data Warehouse mm -hmm. is that we don't have the query concurrency to be able to support yeah. that. Okay. Um, because with SQL Data Warehouse um, and the architecture, it just doesn't support, it, it's designed for really big analytical workloads that you run for hours mm -hmm. and okay. on. But when you want interactivity, the concurrency, the the concurrency, concurrency goes up, yeah. absolutely, yes, because here we have six uh, visualizations, probably nine, ten, ten in total. But and what, yeah. Yeah, and all of them at the same time for multiple users, that's, yeah. that's a challenge. 200 users on a Monday morning at 9 a.m. Yeah, that's, that's definitely, that's definitely yeah. a problem. How difficult was to, to set up the, the full architecture? Because definitely one of the things that is interesting about this is, again, and we mentioned it a, a few moments ago, is how we are mixing uh, everything uh, in terms of different products. We're mixing Azure SQL Hyperscale, we're mixing um, also Power BI, we're mixing analysis services with, with the part of the VertiPack engine on direct query. How difficult was to put it all together? Or, or does it integrate seamlessly? And it's all just seamless integration. Okay. Um, I mean, we can go back and show you how quickly it is yes. to set up a database. Sure, let's, let's take a look to see how, how difficult that is. So, what we do is we want to create a new resource, SQL mm -hmm. databases. Go add. Database name. Okay, yes. Test. We won't actually go through and create it. Yep, um, yep, correct. You know. So, obviously the validations. No. So, this is where you pick the hyperscale. And that's it, just, just like that. In basically two screens, we're able to come and say, yes, give me hyperscale. Yes. Okay. And there we go. Um, there is one thing. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. There's always a gotcha. Yeah, there's always a catch. <laughs> um, so with hyperscale, yes. once you've mi either created or migrated a database to it, because you can actually migrate your current SQL databases to it. Okay. But once you've migrated to it, you can't migrate back just because of the huge change in the storage. Because of the huge there. change in the storage. So I can take the databases I might have in Azure SQL database that I yeah. might be working in models that we might be familiar with right now, like general purpose That's or premium yeah. or standard. Correct. I can power them up to hyperscale, yeah. but I cannot power them down no. from no. hyperscale no. to the previous ones. No. It's a one way journey. Yeah. Okay. Understood. Okay. Um, and this is where, and then you just select your configuration like we did before. Okay. Um, and that, Obviously. Obviously, yes. Yeah. You need, you, we need to be <laughs> to sign that off. Correct. Um, hit apply. That's how simple it and is. And that's it. That's, that's, that's it, all that's the it. process to set up yes. Azure SQL Hyperscale. So no provisioning separately, block, storage accounts, no, or virtual no. networks, nothing like that. No. Just it's the standard process. Standard process that we all know, have come to know and love. Fantastic. So how... how if we were to summarize what we've seen today, what, what, what would you say is, is the summary, the, the final statements on what we've seen today? Um, so I think it's a SQL database for fast analytical workloads using the language we know and love. <clears throat> and also, it also supports the graphing mm -hmm. capabilities in SQL. Okay. Um, which is a capability that um, 
SQL DW doesn't have. Okay, so, so it also it also yeah. supports the concept of of graph databases. So it's yes. basically the SQL Server we're familiar with, but superpowers. Correct. Perfect. So um, thank you very much, Barney, for joining us today. This is a massive data volumes uh, that we're seeing here. And very, very fast response. So really impressed by that. Thank you very much. And thank you all of you for joining us um, for one more episode of Data Lounge. Hopefully you find it a little bit funny, interesting. Uh, if you liked it, don't forget, please let us know down there. If you like it, let us know. And if you uh, want to see some more, please don't forget to subscribe. So thank you for joining us and see you next time. <laughs>